If you're here, you're about to start the Working with Data and APIs course on the coding train. So what I want to do in this video is pretty simple. I just want to give you a, a quick list of all the things you either need to know and before you start the course and what kind of tools and software and thing you need to have running on a computer in order to be able to follow along the tutorials. So probably the most important thing is just JavaScript, the programming language itself. So if you're a total new programmer, if you've never programmed before, maybe you want to check out my intro series about learning to code with JavaScript using the P5.js library. It also be really helpful if you understood the basics of HTML, how to write an HTML web page, what the DOM is, what DOM elements are on the page. So if that's new to you, once again, I'll offer you some uh, resources in this video's description. Knowing a little bit about CSS or cascading style sheets could also be useful, but definitely not required. And that, that really covers all of the uh, things that you need to know before you get started. So now let me move on to what do you need to have operationally on your computer to follow the tutorials. So first, Thing you need is a code editor. In the videos, I'm using Visual Studio Code. It's a pretty popular code editor that a lot of people use now, but there's no reason you need to use it. You could use a number of any, any other text editor that you can find on your computer. Um, Atom is one, Brackets, Sublime. There are so many uh, text editors, everybody has their favorite. You also don't need to use a text editor locally on your computer. You could use, at least for module one, you could use an online code editor, uh, CodePen, JS Fiddle, uh, the P5 web editor, any of these would work. Um, but if you want to follow along exactly what I'm doing, Visual Studio Code is the editor that I'm using. Because I'm using a local text editor, in order for the examples that I'm writing to work, I also need to run a web server. And a lot of the text editors like Visual Studio Code, for example, have extensions that will run a web server for you. You can run a, a web server by typing in some commands into your terminal access to your computer. And so actually, if this is new to you, I might refer you to my workflow series where I cover how to get, download a text editor, how to get shell access, terminal access to your computer, how to launch a web server, all of that sort of stuff. But things really change when I get into modules two and three of this series because there I start using something called Node.js. So you absolutely will want to have shell access to your computer. You'll notice I'm using an application called iTerm, which is a Mac terminal application. Um, you can use just the default Mac terminal application if you're on Windows, the command prompt. Uh, PowerShell, Git Bash, if you're on Linux, I assume you know what you're doing in terms of shell access. So that's what you can use because you're going to want to download and install Node and run Node commands from Terminal itself. You don't actually need to do this right now because when I get into Module 2, I'll explain to you what Node is and how to install it. But if you want to be up and running and ready for that, go ahead and install that now. At the very end of this course, I look at deploying your project to a web server in the cloud. And there I make use of something called Git, which is version control software, and GitHub, which is a website where you can take your Git repos and put them online. Um, that might be completely unfamiliar to you. I will uh, give you a sort of basic primer on that when I get to that, but that certainly would be something that you might want to check out. Um, I have a video series about Git and GitHub as well before you get started with this course. But it won't come in all the way until Module 3. So hopefully I've covered everything that you need to know before you get started with this first video. I am sure that I have forgotten something. So I'd encourage you to check out the video's description because as people are watching the course and asking questions and I realize I'm forgetting things, I will add them to the video's description. So at least there, there will be a list with links of everything that you might need to know or have before you get started with the first video. So that's it. This is it. I'll see you in the next video. I don't have, oh, I do have my train whistle. Goodbye.